you know, virtual drivers in this case, it's Rec Room, and we're going to have a look at how to use the GAS uh, any aircraft truck, which is just released. Uh, so first, in the hangar here, it's got the same kind of options as you would expect on the airplanes. You can adjust your fuel, some modifications available. Um, you can have an all-armor piercing loadout or an all-high explosive loadout. You can set up some gun shields, or you can remove uh, the gun sight cover, which will give you a lot more visibility. Uh, important thing to note here on the high explosive and armor piercing is it tells you the bullet drop, and that's something we need to consider as well. We'll go into that later though. Uh, for the paint schemes, you've got the new tactical codes. So here you can just, you know, we just throw in a number here and um, it'll show up on the side of the truck as well as on the back. And uh, you've got the default scheme here of green, there's a camouflage one, and then there's a white one as well. So we're going to stick with camo for now. And the last section, you can have a photo in the cabin if you want it. So hit accept and then start. And uh, yeah, you can see we're starting up in the cabin here. It's pretty straightforward on uh, these vehicles. There's a nice option here called station notes. And uh, this will give you some notes about the vehicle depending on the position as well as a description showing you um, this position and with all the parts labeled, which is pretty handy, as well as some commands, which you'll um, need to have an idea about when you want to use each position. And uh, if you clicked on them, you'd go through them all. Uh, we're going to have a look at them just now. So starting off with the driver, um, you can open the door if you want on the side. You can also open the side window with Windows C. This also will open up the windscreen if they're kind of linked together. You press E, we'll start the engine. Got a horn. Driving around at night, you'll see these little instruments a bit better. I'll turn on the light there. Also, a headlight. You can use it if you want. And then there's the windscreen wiper. Just got to be careful where you stop this, or else you can obstruct your view. And uh, like with the airplanes, if you press Control C, we go to the next position, which is the gunner. I'll just turn the engine off. So in the gunner position, it works just like with the airplanes. Press T, it's going to pick up the gun. All the crew members are going to get in position and you'll be ready to start firing. Using the mouse, we'll look around. The mouse click is going to shoot the gun. Um, now, if you press Shift T, you're going to go to the burst site, which is the reflector. And if you don't have track IR, you can hold down the Shift key. This will let you look around using the mouse. But if you have track IR, then you can just use track IR itself to look around. But when you're down this side, I'd recommend pausing track IR to avoid getting disoriented. And pressing the Alt L for the light and illumination. Then we'll be able to highlight the gun side a little bit more, let you see things a little bit better. Off. There's the secondary site you can use if the reflector is broken. Now if you press uh, Shift V, to take us to a secondary kind of position where you'll be able to see um, all the different adjustments you'll be making with the site. Uh, we'll be going into these in more detail in a minute, um, so I won't worry too much about this just yet. Now, if we go to the exterior of the vehicle, the truck, we have some supports at the back. Now, if you press G, the supports are going to extend. And what this helps do is it helps dampen the vibration that's created when this gun is firing. That'll help improve the accuracy. But it comes with a downside. So if I was to start the engine and try and drive away, I'm not going to be able to go anywhere because the truck's lifted off the ground. So if you want more accuracy, you need to use these uh, supports. The trade-off is that you won't be able to move. 
So it's up to you uh, if you want to take that trade off or not. So coming back to the gunner position and the site, we're going to have a look at how to use this site and what everything means, as well as the other portion showing all the adjustments we can make. So here we're going to look at the K8T gun site in more detail. Here are the dimensions. So between each tick mark, it's going to be 10 mils apart, both horizontally and vertically. This will give you a total of 80 mils across and 80 mils high. The large tick marks that you see, those are going to be 20 mils wide. And by understanding these dimensions, you can use the site to determine the range of a target. So in this example, we're going to use the gun site to determine the range against a BF-109. So to determine the range, you'll take the wingspan of the airplane, divide it by the number of mils it occupies in the site, and then times that by a thousand. So for the BF-109, its wingspan is going to be about 10 meters. And for example, A is going to occupy 80 mils in the site. This means when we do the calculation, it will come out to be equal to 125 meters. And then if you look at example B, the airplane takes up only uh, 20 mils of the site. So that will give us a range of 500 meters. And in C, the airplane takes up 10 mils. So this will give us a range of 1,000 meters. There are two rings on this gun site you can use, which will depend on the speed of the target. The inner ring is going to have a default speed rating of 60 meters a second. This is equal to about 216 kilometers per hour. And the outer ring has a speed rating of 90 meters per second. This is equivalent to about 324 kilometers per hour. When you're using these rings, if an aircraft is flying at 60 meters a second, then when that airplane is at 90 degrees deflection, you'll place the airplane on the ring with the correct amount of lead. Airplanes fly at different speeds. So you'll need to adjust the ring's speed rating to improve your accuracy, and this is done using the fire control system. There are three controls to use in this system when you make corrections while shooting, but some of them are interconnected on the same control, so you need to be aware of which component you're actually correcting for. You can make lateral corrections, which are based on lateral airplane movement relative to you. There are vertical corrections or range. These are based on the airplane movement either towards or away from you. And then there's aspect angle correction, which will correct for the airplane's movement relative to you. For your lateral corrections, these are what you need to make based on your estimation of the airplane's airspeed and its dive slash climb angle. Um, if you're adjusting for the angle, you're going to use the left side of the gauge. I'll show the angle in degrees. And if you're adjusting for the airspeed, that'll be the right hand side of the gauge. That's measured in meters per second. Then by correcting for the airspeed, you're going to be increasing the speed rating of the site. So here we're going to use an example for a high angle triple one straight and level flight. The inner ring is equivalent to 60 meters per second, which is 216 kilometers an hour. And since the high angle cruise is about 370 kilometers per hour, which is about 100 meters a second, you need an extra horizontal correction of 154 kilometers per hour. That's equivalent to about 42 meters a second. So our correction is going to be um, 40 meters a second. And this will increase your speed ratings of the site. So the inner circle will go from 60 meters a second to 100 meters a second, and the outer circle will go from 90 to 150. By increasing the speed rating of the site, you're improving your accuracy because you're matching it closer to the aircraft's speed. So for vertical corrections, you can adjust the airspeed and the climb dive angle, as well as the range. But adjusting this control will adjust all three components at once. So remember that you only want to pay attention to the value that you're wanting to change. If you adjust your vertical airspeed and dive climb, you're going to use that with the same principle we talked about for the lateral corrections. And if you're adjusting for range, you're only going to use that against level flying targets or against ground targets. This is an example of correcting for bullet drop. So the amount of vertical lead you add to account for the curvature of the bullet path is called super elevation. So at 500 meters, it's only one mil. A thousand meters is four mils, but out at 2000 meters, it's going to be 23 mils of correction. And this amount of lead is going to be made manually, and it's in addition to any vertical lead you already attempt to correct for using the fire control system. For aspect angle, this is referring to the airplane's flight direction relative to you. So the dial itself is measured in minutes, but you're not going to use this when shooting as you have to rely on the techno chat while on the gun site because you're replicating more than one person on this gun. For the aspect angles, 0 degrees is towards you, 180 degrees is away from you, and 90 degrees left and right is perpendicular. Aspect heavily influences the horizontal and vertical corrections. 
So if your aspect is inaccurate, your shooting is going to be as well. Being able to manipulate the fire control system is pretty important for your accurate gunnery. So I changed the controls from the defaults. Um, I use W and S for the vertical scale to increase and decrease it. I use Q and R for the horizontal scale. And for the aspect, I use Z and X. Um, and then to reset the gun sight, I use the semicolon key. So adjusting the horizontal scale, we increase it, it will increase both at the same time. So if I set 50 meters per second, that'll equal 75 degrees. Take that back to zero. And on the vertical scale, this also controls the range. So you're only going to adjust one of the three items. So even though as we make the adjustment here, we're going to move everything at once, you're only going to pay attention to one. So I'm moving range, I'm moving the vertical scale for climb speed as well as the angle, all at the same time, but you're only paying attention to one value at once. Now for the target aspect angle correction, I want you to think of this as being an angle off the nose. So if I was to reset the gun sight, pressing the gun sight reset button, we're going to see that it resets to 30 minutes. And this is equivalent to zero degrees of aspect, which is going to be head on to you. So if I was to go to 45 minutes, that's 90 degrees right aspect, which means the airplane is flying from your left to your right. And then if I go towards zero minutes, that tells you that the airplane is going to be flying away from you. And if I move the dial to 15 minutes, this is equivalent of 90 degrees left. And this means that the airplane is going to be flying from your right to your left. Some basic settings you can use against targets that are diving against you or uh, objectives nearby. We're going to assume they're going to be diving between 5 and 600 kilometers per hour. So we're going to need to make some adjustments um, to the gun sight vertically and horizontally. So I'll set the horizontal speed to uh, 90 meters a second and then um, we'll adjust the dive angle. So generally I'll start out with a dive angle of around 15 degrees, but if you can tell that your target is diving steeper, then you can adjust it even further. So this setting is a good starting point. Um, but as long as the airplane dies and flies in a straight line, you can just move the gun and your aspect angle will change automatically. But if it makes a turn, then you need to adjust your aspect manually. And by adding the extra speed, uh, you've increased your speed rating of the sight. So the inner ring is now going to be equal to 150 meters a second. And the outer ring is going to be equal to 180 meters a second. So with that in mind, we'll look at how to start shooting at stuff. All right, so we're in the truck now, I'm gonna shoot at some targets, which I'm putting into practice what we've just gone over. So I'm gonna move the truck forward a little bit, and I'm gonna have some Yonkers 52s to shoot at. So we're gonna extend the supports and turn the engine off, bring back the scale and the vertical back to zero for now. And uh, what we're gonna do is look at this Yonkers and um, look at the aspect initially. And since it's flying towards us, it's going to have an aspect of about zero degrees. So we'll use the gun sight reset button, which is going to be right alt apostrophe by default. And this way we'll set the aspect to zero degrees. And then from there, we're going to adjust the aspect a little bit using the compass uh, controls, which is going to be left, shift, Z and X. I'm going to set it up to be about 10 degrees left. Now the next step is starting to add your horizontal speed correction. Now, um, remember I'm going to use the inner ring on this, and that's equal to 60 meters a second. So I'm guessing, that, you know, the Junkers is going to be cruising about 240 kilometers per hour or higher. So I'm looking between 70 to 80 meters per second is what I need to have as my speed rating on the inner ring. So in order to get that, I need to add between 10 and 20 meters a second. That way I'm going to be accounting for the Junkers 52's airspeed. And since the aircraft is flying straight and level, I can then adjust the range. And I'm going to want to begin my shooting at about 2,000 meters. So I'll be using the uh, range adjustment key in order to do that. So now that the sight is set up, I'm going to start ranging the uh, 52 so I know when I'm going to start shooting. Now the wingspan of it is going to be 30 meters wide. And when it's 10 mils wide on the sight, when we do the math, it's going to come out to be equal to 3,000 meters away. And when it's on the 20 mil portion of the site, 
uh, that means it's going to be 1500 meters away. So I'm going to be firing somewhere in between there. I kind of see it coming in on about 3000 meters now. And I'm a slight little bit of angle off as well. So I'm going to have that visualized. And then I'm going to add the extra um, 20 mils or so in for the vertical loop we need to account for the bullet drop. So we just start firing a couple of bursts at a time. And watch where the traces go, see if we can correct. You can start bringing the range in if you want it. Just sort of guessing as it's coming closer to you. Once it starts getting closer, um, you can pretty much just rely on the trace to try and aim. When I've hit that one, I'll switch to the next one. And this one's already flying away from us, so we need to change the aspect angle quickly and start firing. Again, this one's flying away and it's starting to left turn, so we get the aspect to about 90 degrees as he comes towards us. Put him on the edge of the ring and start firing again. Yeah, with everything is set up pretty much where it needs to be, all we have to do is fire and watch the traces and then we can make adjustments to our lead accordingly based on where the traces went. This airplane is nice and slow and it's getting even closer to us so we're going to need less lead and it's going to get even easier to hit. See it's on fire nicely and about to go and crash. Obviously because these airplanes fly so slowly it's very easy to shoot them down so we're going to have a look at how to shoot stuff that's going to fly at you a little bit faster. Alright so here we've got a bunch of different airplanes. Uh, right now I'm focusing on these Heinkel Triple Ones. Their cruise speed is about 370 kilometers an hour so I'm going to add in about 40 meters a second to account for their speed. We've got the aspect set to zero and I can adjust the range a little bit because they're flying straight and level. I want to shoot between uh, 1 and 2,000 meters so get the range right and start firing. Watch the traces and start adjusting. It looks like they're passing underneath, I'll add more lead. It looks like they're flying over the top, I'll add less lead. I've got them on fire. Let's switch to number two. About 90 degrees. Put him on the ring, start firing. Takes him out. So the Heigl's pretty much out of the picture. All we're left with are some 190s and some 110s. Um, so what's going to happen is these guys will be diving at their targets to attack. So this means um, they're going to increase their airspeed a lot. So I'm going to be increasing my horizontal speed to about 90 meters per second for the inner rings, that way I've got 150 meters per second in total to work with. And because they're going to be diving, I need to add in that diving um, angle as well, about 15 degrees. So I'm just going to pick one of these 110s to shoot at. The first round I'll shoot here goes right, because I haven't set the aspect correctly. It should have been slightly left. But that's okay, I can just move the gun sight and adjust because of the traces. Let me score a hit and put him in fire. Alright, as I swoop me around for another pass, this is going to be a 190. So I'll reset my aspect so it's back to zero. And I'll start firing. I'll adjust my aim based on where the trace is going. And as the aspect increases, I have to start adding more lead. I can see hit the 190 and put him on fire. So switching to what looks like a 110 here. Again, we're just firing and adjusting the traces accordingly. Score a couple of hits, give them a fuel leak. More 110s, and what's really important is the aspect in this. If you're not adjusting your aspect to reflect what the airplane is, then you're really going to have a hard time hitting your targets because as you add that horizontal speed and the diving speed or angle it's going to really mess with your aim. 
You see, managed to blow one up. 90 degrees aspect here. We'll put him on fire. Back again for some more 190s. This one's going to be pretty much straight on. So there's almost going to be no lead required. Just firing away, trying to hit him. Some good hits on him. Now I don't have time to adjust for the second target, so I'm just going to base my fire on the tracers and score a hit. But getting hits from a fast airplane like that is at 90 degrees is not very likely. Your best chances against uh, fast moving aircraft like that are going to be periods when they're at a low aspect. So it will be somewhere between 0 and 30 degrees off. So here we're at a low aspect. We're going to lead and start shooting, look at the traces and make adjustments. Should be a little bit high. So I'm going to lower it and move to the right. And put him on fire. We're keeping our aspect near 0. So he's going to pass on the right side, so I'll add a bit of right aspect, about 10 degrees. Start firing. Make adjustments according to the tracer. Adding a little bit lower here. Keep shooting. And he snaps his wing off. Alright, so we've got another Fork Wolf coming in. Head on to us, it looks like. So we get the aspect close to zero. It's in range, we start shooting. Watching for those traces. Small adjustments. Start raising the aim as he comes closer. Let's score a few hits. Here's the last airborne kill of a fast mover. Coming in straight on. It's all about having your sights set up correctly. If it's set up right, you can make some small adjustments and you can score some good hits to kill them. So shooting at ground targets, it's the same principle. Um, however, for an easy way to look at it is, let's just assume that ground vehicles all have a length of about 5 meters. And uh, that way you can use the ranging um, technique using the mills on the site in order to know how far away they are. So if a vehicle fills up the 10 mil line, it's going to be 500 meters away. And if it filled up the 20 mil line, it's going to be 250 meters away. So right now I'm expecting some vehicles to come over the hill. And uh, we'll gauge how far away they are once the first vehicle comes over. So there's the first vehicle just coming over the hill now. So I'll move the side over. Put on the 10 mil line to measure it. Now it's going to be about 500 meters. So I'll set my range to 500, put the cursor on, and start firing. I'm using high explosive rounds here, so I may not be able to destroy this vehicle, but at the very least, I'll be able to force the crew to bail out of it. Let's see them starting to run out now. I think you can kill the crew as well. So I might try and shoot at one. I might have missed him there, he's still running. But uh, you can see here I'm not really doing enough damage to the vehicle to destroy it. So I'm going to switch up to this other vehicle that's come over the hill. And I know it's already at the right range. So you can account for movement a little bit and fire a few rounds at a time. That's pretty much all you have to worry about with ground vehicles. Um, I wouldn't recommend attacking tanks um, simply because they just one-shot you. It's going to be hard for you to get the penetration um, against a tank. So you're much better off than like a kind of a point defense idea and uh, waiting for vehicles to come into your perimeter and then being able to shoot at them. And uh, you have an effective range of about, to about 2,400 meters. So right now about 500 meters or so. This is kind of a nice range to engage, you know, trucks and things like that and other light targets. And if you wanting to engage much further out, you'll really be needing to look closely at your monitor and picking out the uh, 
the range of the target before you even attempt shooting and even when you are shooting you're going to do maybe one round at a time. I know this video is a lot longer than what I usually make, I just wanted to make sure the vehicle had a proper overview and also good examples of how to use it. Assisting targets with it is definitely not easy. Till next time though, I'm going to fly safe and check your six.